positive reinforcement is actually how habits are created. No one gets anywhere being shamed. You cannot shame yourself to hit your goals. Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world, and the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity, and it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Beat Till You See It interview recap bar. My co-host in life, Brad, and I are going to dig into the motivational convo I had with Tamika Robinson in our last episode. If you haven't yet listened to that episode, feel free to pause this now. Go back. Listen to that one. You're going to hear Tamika and I giggle a lot, especially if you listen on 2X like Brad does, then it sounds like chipmunks. Um, But it's a lot of fun. It's quite motivational. I loved it. It was really great. And then you can come back and listen to this or you can listen to us now and then decide if you want to listen to that. Whatever you want to do is totally fine. I just want to like highlight for a moment that this is the first time ever I have not tripped up on the intro of the recap. And we should just take a moment because it's what, 200, episode 290. (laughs) <laughs> so 145 times of trying. Here we are I celebrating. I also did not interrupt you. So yeah. You didn't interrupt me and I didn't fuck up. And um, you got to celebrate when you do things so your dopamine kick happens. And this is now a habit. Woo woo. Uh, okay. So today is November 16th. Um, it's use less stuff day. That That's so crazy. I think that my FYF for tomorrow is about how I cleared out my closet. I didn't even know that. So great. Um, So uh, the day was created to spread awareness around the clutter of unnecessary things in our homes, especially during the busiest shopping months of the year. It encourages people to adopt a minimalist lifestyle where only the essentials are bought or kept. Um, Keep that in mind as we talk about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Most everything that we're about to talk about is digital. So not going to take up any space. (laughs) But um, I agree. I do think that like we'd probably have a lot of things. So maybe pick a room. One of the things that Brad and I do around the new year, um, which we're going to do this time around Thanksgiving is because we're never home on the new years anymore. So I picked a new holiday. So on Thanksgiving uh, weekend, we are, we go through room by room, like clean out a closet, clean out a drawer and just like get rid of stuff. You're like, I, what is this? It's taking up space. And it was a hell of a lot easier when we lived in an apartment. Yes. Now we don't, but now we have a whole weekend to do it, Brad, because we have Black Friday through Cyber Monday. That's and, true. And That's true. also, even if you just start with one room and you just do the one room and you go, okay, I have not used this in so many years. Like, do you really need it? Give it away to someone. Give it to some- You can sell things on Facebook Marketplace. You can make some money. So you can actually get paid. Yes, you can. Then what's going on? So Next month is December, so we'll be on tour for our winter tour, and we've got tons of cities and lots of opportunity. Bring your friends, bring your family. There's classes that anyone can attend, and then there's workshops that um, I design them so that whether you're a teacher or a client, you can enjoy them, but um, there are CECs if you are a teacher. So go to opc.me slash tour to see what cities we're going to be in. Look, we're driving 7,000 miles. You can drive two hours. I'm just saying. 100%. You can be part of, if you are like, oh my God, it's holidays a family i bet you they i bet you need a break or (laughs) you can bring them and let me entertain them so opc.me slash tour you're going to want to be there next week is the holiday Yeah, it's a crazy tour we're going to be hitting something like 20 plus locations yeah on this yeah i want to light i want to light in the van that's like you are in denver and like hello (laughs) denver what's up like i (laughs) Then I want to go, okay, Leslie, you are now in here. Okay, I'm in Austin. Okay. Like, I need my, I need a flashing light. Anyways, um, but let's get back to today. Uh, next week is the official Black Friday Cyber Monday situation. So I know your inbox is full of people who celebrated all month long. But here at um, our household, we really like nostalgia. And so the earliest we kick things off is next Wednesday, um, the day before Thanksgiving. There are lots of opportunities for you to 
um, save on Matt flashcards, on Pilates workshops, on business workshops. Um, and my special upcoming live webinar. Yes. We're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be selling tickets for that over BFCM as well. And we might as well go into what that webinar is. What your website needs. You uh, all, the websites are not going anywhere. I don't care how important social media seems to be in your life. And no matter what your be it till you see it is, I bet you need a website. So I'll this, be catering it specifically towards Pilates instructors. Yeah, but if you're uh, in the it, service-based business, you if can. If you're yoga or anything like that. Uh, that's super good. You, you know, it'll be super applicable for you too. Yeah, and I'm going to be really digging into things like, um, let's say you actually have no interest in doing the website yourself. By the end of the uh, webinar, you should be able to have a comprehensive, uh, you know, conversation with your web designer, web developer yeah. person so that, you know, you don't feel like they're talking over your head. Well, and also you want to be able to know, like, you don't need them to sell you things you don't need. So when you know what yeah. your website needs, you can be really clear, like, this is what I want. How much is this? And that way you can really price compare. And you can find if someone's not listening to you, be like, oh, like you're going to have a lot more confidence in those conversations. So super yeah. huge. You're going to want to make sure if you're in the service-based industry, you're going to want to make sure you're watching for our profitable Pilates emails um, because the best deal is going to be around the Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So we... Um, um, have discounts on OPC and on Profitable Pilates. So you'll have to go to the website specifically to grab all of those. Yeah. There's options if you're not an OPC member, but you've always wanted to try it out. There's a deal for that. I mean, we are doing all the things. Most of them are digital. So you can still clean out your house and be clutter free and get these things. But you're going to want my flashcards. Just saying. Anyways. Okay. So that is all the updates for us. Before we get into the episode with Tamika, do we have an audience question? Hey, we sure do. What a coincidence uh, this week. Um, I just got this question today on Instagram. What microphones do you use to record your Pilates workouts? Yes. So, okay. Um, in all honesty, I don't know. But Brad probably does. Uh, what we do, we, we, what we use whatever Nate tells us to use. Yes. So Nate is the most incredible, most amazing salesperson um, at Sweetwater Sound. And you guys, uh, Sweetwater is like one of the coolest companies because they're like, they're kicking ass when it comes to selling um, microphones in all the spaces. They're just like, they sell more than microphones. They it's have it's uh, basically that like in the 90s and early 2000s, they were competing with Guitar Center, which was brick and mortar, and they were a mail order catalog only. And then they went online. And then now they actually give Amazon a run for their money for oh, yeah. music distribution and or they for music um Gear, gear. Yeah. distribution. And they have warehouses now in different places, which is a huge new thing for them. They, they used to just only be in West Coast Fort one. Wayne. Yeah. And so they can get you stuff so quickly. So yeah. Nate is our guy. And so here's how you can find out all the information on anything that we use to record for our uh, YouTube videos and our on-demand workouts. You go to profitapplies.com slash live stream. Brad made a fancy guide Ooh. and it has literally all the things you need to level up your live stream. You, it's free. It's a free guide. Just go to profitwise.com slash live stream. Yeah. And if the uh, gear changes over time, so, you know, it, there's a, there's direct connection to Nate right in the, on that mm -hmm. guide. Tell him so what you're doing you and can he'll just, tell you what you should get. Just reach out to him. Just email him and, and tell him that you came from us. Tell him what you're looking for and yep. he'll help, help you out. He did our podcast mics. He does. He helps us with our plies mics. He even speaking. does lighting. Oh, yeah. And so. speaking of plies mics, we have to uh, get a new cord because we're at a year and yeah these cords just so you know everyone they're not made for filming pilates they're made for maybe filming a spin class they're not made for rolling around on the microphone cord no correct and so <laughs> basically like my cord lasts a year that's all that's pretty much all it is and it's annoying and it's frustrating and yes it's it costs money guess what it costs money to make money i don't i i'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you it fucking costs money <laughs> So Don't worry. Yeah. The, the cord's not that bad. It's like a hundred bucks. No, the cord, it's like seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's been, but yeah, but like when you invest the first time for the microphone, it's yeah, like a hundred bucks. The microphone is yeah. more expensive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The cord but is fine. Anyway, so profitalize.com slash live stream. You guys send your questions in. We answer questions ranging all host of things. Um, so send them in to the Be It Pod so we can answer your questions on the next episode.
Okay, now let's talk about Tamika Robinson, founder of JarFit. Tamika shares her journey as a personal trainer, focusing on aiding women to achieve their body goals. She's committed to empowering her clients, celebrating their small wins, and fostering self-belief through each step of their fitness journey. Um, and uh, I don't know if you've gone to her website to see uh, pictures of her competition oh my God. body, um, but she's amazingly impressive uh when it comes to uh she competes uh and i think she's won titles and stuff so it's amazing to see um you know someone I, who can, I who find can do that I, that is the her whole husband i believe also competes because he's massive i know but you know like that that means that parts of the year they only have rice and salmon and i like that's a whole world of life we didn't really dive into com competitions just because um i wanted to be something oh on you the could, combo yeah no yeah you because, hardly talked about because i wanted to be like what you can be till you see it and i really like so we had on james patrick a while back and he house photographer mm -hmm. yeah and he hosts an amazing event every year about getting like booked um for gigs hello august hi august. um and getting booked for gigs and um uh we are one of the media outlets that they can get booked on and yes. he has been on the show so he knows what we're looking for and out of the like 500 people he's like here are the best people i think you'd like so Take a look at all 500, but I think you would love these. And I did look through about 100, but I looked at the five that he sent me. And Tamika, just like, I really, so what, what came through on her stuff is very much this. Like she said, if you get better 1% every day, that at the end of the year, that's 365%. Now, I'm sure there's a mathematician who's actually going to say, well, actually, if you started off at 100%, it does include, compound. But it does compound. Uh, still, so it's even more amazing. It's, even more, yeah. it's yeah. even more amazing. And I loved it because it made me think of Alan Stein Jr., about how he's always like, did I get 1% closer to my yes. goal today? And so I think, like, especially because the women who listen to this podcast, hi, I see you, my type A perfectionist. Um, we tend to think it's all or nothing. If I didn't improve 100%, I did nothing today. And it's like, actually, what if you just did fucking one thing? Yeah. There's one thing today that got you closer to your goal. At the end of the year, it's 365 fucking things. You probably are going to surpass that goal, you know? And so, but we make it up so hard. So um, she, uh, she does this a little bit more specifically. We got into like how she's with her weight training and like helping people. But I want to like more importantly, I want to talk about how she like uses positive reinforcement to motivate her clients. You guys, positive reinforcement is actually how habits are created. No one gets anywhere being shamed. You cannot shame yourself to hit your goals. Period. End of story. You might be able to shame yourself to get out of the fucking bed a couple times a week or maybe get to the whatever the place. But like you cannot shame yourself to achieving anything because it doesn't work. It's the same thing as like motivation. Like if you're waiting to be motivated, like that's going to come on you. I was motivated at 4 a.m. this morning. That is not a consistent thing. It's just because we got home and we're still working on getting up at 5 a.m. But I was like motivated and ready to go. Uh, that's you know, you can't just wait on motivation. It's going to come up at the worst times. Right. And she also talked about like how she really encourages her clients to journal and uh, on their experiences and reflections. And I think this is really great. We listened to a guy on his podcast and he writes everything down. He must write his every day down because he remember he has these stories. He's like, on this day, 23 years ago, yeah, this it's, thing it's, happened it's to me. And I'm like, impressive. what the fuck? Is he reading his journal? Like, how does he know what happened on this day to himself in 47 years? Like, what is happening? Well, but, yeah, like, obviously has it all cataloged too, so he could flip through. Yeah. And like immediately if, reference like I, this day on all of these years previous. I mean, and you I, know. what if we just did that for the recaps instead of like going, it's this day in the world right now? We're like, okay, on this day, 27 years ago. In my life. In my <laughs> life, I went on my first date. <laughs> No, but like if you can take whether you want to journal in the morning or in the evening, find a time to like talk, like write down your experiences from the day, write down three things that happened to you and then reflect on like, how did you like that? What was your favorite part about that? Because those kinds of things help you really understand yourself. I would, Brad and I were in a coaching session today with our coach and I was like, oh, I journaled today and I became extremely aware of like 
how I've been holding myself back this year. And it's not like in a negative way. It's like, oh, aha moment. Whoa. Like these things are really important. So I love that she does that. And then she um, really encourages them to acknowledge their own progress um, so they can feel good about their achievements. So just, I think that there more, more coaches like her affecting more women out in the world. She does it through weight training, but like, my goodness, you guys don't, you don't have to weight train with her to get this. You can actually like take these things and like apply them to your life the way you do them. Yeah, totally. And uh, well, she said a bunch of things that I also dug. Uh, One, I thought it was really fun that she mentioned um, she and her partner both share similar uh, personal goals. And so that's why they started working together. Um, And that was fun um, because that's how life is for us. And it made me think about that. But uh, I really loved when she was talking about like her transition into becoming a coach, Mm -hmm. uh, becoming a um, trainer actually. And uh, so she said, if you're planning on starting your side hustle or leaving your full-time job, you must know what it is that you need to make so that you can enjoy. I knew you'd love this. Yeah, so you can like enjoy being, you know, in your new role. And because she, it was really interesting to listen to her talk about like the idea of being a trainer and that being her profession, right? Because she comes from like, she went and got a criminal justice background degree, I like know. master's degree. I she know. was like trying to work for the FBI. I know. Like three times she applied and, and wasn't getting into the FBI. And I mean, then, like, they're fucking lost because she's amazing. Yeah. But and also like, she's so sweet. I feel like the she, FBI would like, just like, yeah, yeah. Just, like squeeze you out. Yeah. <laughs> but she, you know, so she had this preconceived notion of like, who am I, what am I supposed to do with my life? And then she just enjoyed the training and then started, you know, she got certified and then started training people. And, but I still think even she mentioned that even after she started taking clients, she still wasn't like convinced herself that this is her job, her profession, Mm -hmm. right? And it took a long time for her to settle in and actually really lean into it. Um, And, you know, so I think, when she was first starting out, she was a little unsettled. Like, I'm not, you know, making my insurance or I'm not making my, my, you know, the money that I think I should be making or whatever. And so she then reflects on that and t- teaches her cl- clients mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, know what you need to make uh, before you quit. And she said also what I thought was really nice is that it was messy. It was a messy process. I thought that was really cool that she was so transparent. You know, it didn't happen overnight. She didn't like immediately start making her goal income right away, all the things. In fact, she um, she started writing herself a check for 10 grand um, uh, every single month. Even if she wasn't able to cash that check, she began to visualize this concept of like, this is the amount of money that I know that I want to make. I'm going to write myself this check until I can cash this I'm check. I'm obsessed with this in so many reasons. Yeah. The reason, one of the reasons is, A, too often people who work for themselves don't pay themselves an actual paycheck. They just like take from the bank account. Like right. they don't actually get the same paycheck every month, right? And the other reason I love it is like she's practicing writing down $10,000 paid to Tamika. Like the the reality- I think she started talking about mo- um, monopoly money though because she was like, I don't have a checkbook. <laughs> yeah, but also, okay, yes, but, but also like seeing that or this is something I talk to like people who are like, that's too much money to charge. It's like, say it out loud all the time so it doesn't sound foreign. It's like you, the, those, these things can become a little esoteric or if you only think about them in your head, but if you actually like write the check, like we've had to like, when we, well, got, when yeah, we bought this house- like, It doesn't feel I, real. Like right. it's- um, you know, it's like telling yourself, good job, but you don't, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't so, really benefit you. I think like the best thing you can do is like write yourself the check, even if you don't cash it or, you know, grab a monopoly. Money, yeah, you got to associate or, it with an action like cele- like doing celebration is more than, you know, yes, you inside your head saying, no, it has to I be. did it. You have to talk it out loud. You have to like actually do something. And Say say these prices and these goals out loud because ten thousand dollars might seem like a lot if you're like me and you came from no money. Oh my fucking god! Right. Like holy fuck, that's a lot of money. But if you start to say it out loud and you talk about these numbers with your friends and things like, I think it's so important for women to talk about how much money they make, and not in like a boastful way. This is not like an arrogant way. This is a 
We have to start seeing these numbers as normal. It is normal to make $10,000 a month. Yeah. It should be normal. And I know that like, if you're like, oh my God, Leslie, I barely make $2,000 a month. Like I'm like so poor. Yeah. But talk, like talk these numbers out so that 10,000 doesn't seem so far away. It seems one, you earn it. You deserve it. You deserve more than that. You're worthy of that. Yeah. And two, when you say your prices, it's not about your budget, right? It's about what you're worth of the effects that you make that your talent has on these people's the, lives. The impact that you're having. The in, You're not charging yeah. for the 55 minutes. You're charging for the impact it's having. And so um, Danny J, we got to have Danny J and Jill on the pod. We should yeah. just do that. Yeah, we so, should just do that. Okay. <laughs> If you're listening, ladies, <laughs> I'll just text them after this. Um, but uh, Danny J had uh, us like take what we charge and double it and go around and say, how much does it cost to work with you? And I'm like, okay, so I took the OPC most expensive membership and I said, okay, it costs $1,400 a year to take. Um, and I said, how many classes that that membership includes? What's like six times 12 is 64, 66, 64. I wasn't actually 12 times six. How much do you, how much is 12 times six? You get 104 classes with yeah. the most expensive right. one. I think okay, so, 152. Okay. 152. 152 plus, something like so that. So 152 for $1,500. It's only 150. We don't charge $1,500 guys, but the point was to take what you charge and double it. And so if you think about hold it, that's fucking $10 a class. Well, guess what? My rates are actually half that. So it's five fucking dollars a class to work with me for a whole year. That's so cheap, right? But we think about, oh my God, it's $700. Like we think about the bigger right, number, right. breaking it down. So Danny J had us like take the money, double it, and then walk around saying that. So that when you say your actual price, it sounds so inexpensive. Well, in that same vein, I um, she recommended a book. Um, I can't wait to read this. It's Overcoming, on my list. called Overcoming Under Earning by Barbara Stanny. And, um, you know, it was interesting to listen to her talk about that. I, I think that uh, um, it would have been really beneficial for me uh, when I was first getting started, you know, too, because I was like, oh, man, if I can only make $100 today, you know, or if I can only make $30,000 a year, if I can only make $50,000 a year. And, you know, I think it's really important that um, we, like you said, talk about the money side of it, but also it is expensive to live in a city, period. So it doesn't matter which city you're in, it's expensive to live in a city. And, you know, to make 50 grand in a city, you're barely paying your bills. Yeah. You know, 50 grand seemed like so much fucking money for me. Yeah. Well, you know? Because, I mean, I knew what my parents made. Like my mom, I'm just going to say this because people don't know how school teachers make. My mom taught at private school and in the 2000s, and I guess they call it the aughts. I don't really understand where that comes from. In the 2000s, she made $22,000 a year as a full-time fifth grade school teacher. What the fuck? Yeah. That is McDonald's employees back then made more money in a year full-time. Okay. So she's a college educated person who was making that. My father was making a little over 40 something at some point when I heard his salary. Me getting paid $50,000, I was like, I'm slaying. Right. I'm killing it. No, I could barely pay my fucking bills like where I live because I lived in a city like you did. And so it's like, but because my mindset that seemed like That's so right. much it's money, mindset. That's right. it was, I did not have a mindset like, that that was like. I was like, like, oh my gosh, if I can make 75, I'm going to be rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you move to, I don't know. I don't even know where you can live for 75000 anymore. Maybe Alabama. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but I think, but so this book, it, it was interesting to hear her talk about it. And and uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we're going to check it out too. We haven't actually checked it out. But Overcoming Under Earning by Barbara Stanny. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, she, she also um, talked about you know, identifying her current situation and desired goals, she created a plan uh, saying, I, I'm going to calculate all my clients, figure out what I'm paying rent, what I need, and then I'm going to figure out the plan. So for those of you who have worked with us in agency, that probably sounds really familiar. Uh, we obviously talk about the magic number calculator, and it really helps create that clarity for what you need to set for your rates um, to help you work backwards, just like she was talking about here, so that you can make the money that you need to make to include time off, sick days off, 
you know, all those kinds of things. And I just thought it was really uh, aligned with what we are all about. So yeah, great stuff. Yeah, I'm in love. Tamika, we love you. All right. So finally, let's talk about those be it action items. What bold, executable, intrinsic or targeted action items can we take away from your combo with Tamika Robinson? Uh, she said, if you are stressed, cry. It's okay. You're allowed. You're allowed to do it. She said, feel your feelings. Crying is perfectly acceptable. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is interesting. Um, I, uh, I was never really taught this. Uh, when- I cry all the time. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> and I I have to remind myself it's okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm still talking over here. So my so what I was never really taught this and my um my feeling, my feelings, I would wait, wait, wait until it became anger. And then I would feel my feelings in an explosive way. And that never benefited me anyone else around me, none of that stuff. So I thought it was really uh, helpful to just hear that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're you're supposed to feel your feelings. That's being human. Um, and if that, you know, turns into tears, that's okay. It's allowed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that you've heard it now. And I think... <laughs> It uh, would have been really helpful 20 years ago. I Well, but isn't that the truth? I think- Even like, 10. Well, c- can I just be honest? Girls are told not to cry. And oh, especially do so not- So are boys. Do not, well, girls can cry, but not at work. Don't let anyone see you cry at work. Right. And it's like, okay, but your passion is actually super- <gasps> Like, if you- if you're crying all the time, like maybe go check your hormones. But like, if you are so passionate about something, you're so frustrated, it makes you cry because like the, like it's okay to like have those feelings because if you shove them down, um, there is a really great book. Um, I want to say it's called burnout. It's by two sisters. I don't know that burnout. I heard them on Brene Brown's podcast, but they said like that it's so important to, to let it is. Burnout. Uh, yeah. Emily and Amelia. Yes. Nagasaki. Yes. So they said like sometimes in the moment it's not appropriate to feel your no, feelings. Nagoski. Yeah. It's not always appropriate. So like for example, you uh, maybe walking down the street and somebody like calls out like I'll just say I'll I'll do an actual example of my life. I was run in LA. I used to run, and this guy who was dressed like a gnome—I swear to fucking God—a like, gnome, a gnome. Yes, you heard me say it. He looked like he was out of straight out of the fucking Hobbit. He had a foil little cap on, and he. I was thinking his about beard. the Seven Dwarves. Oh, he maybe, but like really straight out of the Hobbit. Like, kind of looked like the like the bigger guy with the thing. And he braided his beard. And it was. It was. I'd be running with my own, and he'd go, "You're a whore." <laughs> what? Right. Because he's cra- he has he has mental problems, okay? So he always has more problems than I have. It doesn't feel good to feel be called that, right? So when I was out of arm's reach of him, I would laugh out loud because, like, if I were just to like shove that down, and every Sunday this man would call me a whore, um, it it is actually not okay. You don't want to be called that. It doesn't feel good to be called that. There was another guy that Eric used to hear. He would like, he was this other crazy dude on Wilshire and he would call out something. And I just started going, you know, may the Lord open, blessed be. Like, <laughs> but I would like I make a that. joke about it because I had to let out, I had to have a reaction to let that out. And their whole point is like, maybe in the moment you can't let it out. Like in my case, I was in a, a, an area where I could like let, like joke about it or laugh it out. But if you do have to like hold it together, cause maybe someone says in a meeting and you can't say anything in the meeting, you can't cry in the meeting, then you need to actually get home, get to a pillow, scream in the pillow, like let it out. Because if you don't, if you don't feel your feelings, they bottle up and they actually do cause stress on the body and they can keep you from becoming the person you're meant to be in this world. So I love that beat action. Mine is she said to write down a hundred things on your to-do list. And I swear to God, when she said that, I was like, well, maybe you are editing this be it action item out. Cause this is not aligned with my values. But then she said, then after the fifth thing, cross everything out. <laughs> yeah. She said, then, yeah. Uh, she said, take the top five and cross out 95 of them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I love this. Actually, I just got off a book club meeting with uh, agency members called do the, uh, the book was like, do the one thing. 
or the one thing or whatever. And, um, I love this because it's so true. We put all these things on our list, but really the first five things are the most pressing things because they're top of mind. The other 95, you're just like, look at me. I'm so busy. Look at me. I've got all these important things to do. So I thought that is so fun because then you can get all that shit off your head anyway. Yeah, it's a brain dump, total Such brain dump. Such a great brain dump. And then you know what your top five priorities are. Boom, way to go. Um, it helps to underscore the importance of having clear, tangible steps and a pathway to achieving your personal goals. Um, so way to go, Tamika. You're so fun. I'm so glad that James introduced us. I'm glad you put yourself out there so that you could be on this podcast and I'm excited for what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. It was Enjoyed great. It. We Lovely. loved it. All right. I'm Les Logan. I'm Brad Kroll. Thank you so much for being here. You all, we could not have the show without you. You just heard the episode 290, which means in Crazy. 10 episodes, that means less than three weeks. We're hitting episode three fucking hundred. Woo. Holy moly. Um, we have an epic week of episodes for you that week because um, we got Michael and Broken coming back. So we want to know what your favorite part of this episode was. You have to actually tell us though. Like, yeah. So, yeah. You actually have to like so send us a DM. I'm going to call you out. Do it. I need you to either email or DM or if you have our phone number, whatever means of ways of you know Chat how to communicate to us. with us, whatever. We want to know so we can actually continue to provide guests that you want to hear from, but also we can continue to make this podcast better because yep. holy fucking moly, episode 300. 300. Thank you so much for being here. Have an amazing day. And until next time, be it till you see it. Bye for now. That's all I got for this episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of the Bloom Podcast Network. It's written, filmed, and recorded by your host, Leslie Logan, and me, Brad Kroll. It is produced and edited by the Epic Team at Desenio. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music, and our branding by designer and artist, Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to Melissa Solomon for creating our visuals and Semena Velazquez for our transcriptions. Also to Angelina Herico for adding all the content to our website, and finally to Meredith Crowell for keeping us all on point and on time. Thank you.